The United States presidential election of 1848 was the 16th quadrennial presidential election, held on Tuesday, November 7, 1848. In the aftermath of the Mexican-American War, General Zachary Taylor of the Whig Party defeated Senator Lewis Cass of the Democratic Party. The contest was the first presidential election that took place on the same day in every state, and it was the first time that Election Day was statutorily a Tuesday, despite Taylor's unclear political affiliations and beliefs, and the Whig opposition to the Mexican-American War. The 1848 Whig National Convention nominated the popular general over party stalwarts such as Henry Clay and Daniel Webster. For vice president, the Whigs nominated Millard Fillmore, a New York Whig known for his moderate views on slavery. Incumbent President James K. Polk, a Democrat, honored his promise not to seek re-election, leaving his party's nomination open. The 1848 Democratic National Convention rejected former President Martin Van Buren's bid for a second term, instead nominating Senator Lewis Cass of Michigan. Van Buren broke from his party to lead the ticket of the Free Soil Party, which opposed to the extension of slavery into the territories. The Whig choice of Zachary Taylor was made almost out of desperation, he was not clearly committed to Whig principles, but he was popular for leading the war effort. The Democrats had a record of prosperity and had acquired the Mexican Cession and parts of Oregon country. It appeared almost certain that they would win unless the Whigs picked Taylor. Taylor won a plurality of the popular vote and a majority of the electoral vote, while Van Buren won 10.1% of the popular vote, a strong showing for a third-party candidate. Taylor's victory made him the second of two Whigs to win a presidential election, following William Henry Harrison's victory in the 1840 presidential election. Like Harrison, Taylor died during his term, and he was succeeded by Fillmore. Discounting Republican Abraham Lincoln's 1864 re-election on the National Union ticket, Taylor is the most recent individual who was not a member of the Democratic or Republican parties to win a presidential election. Nominations Whig Party nomination Mexican-American War General Zachary Taylor of Kentucky, an attractive candidate because of his successes on the battlefield, but who had never voted in an election himself, was openly courted by both the Democratic and Whig parties. Taylor ultimately declared himself a Whig, and easily took their nomination, receiving 171 delegate votes to defeat Henry Clay, Winfield Scott, Daniel Webster and others. After Webster turned down the vice presidential candidacy, Millard Fillmore received the party's nomination for vice president, defeating—among others—Abbott Lawrence, a Massachusetts politician whose mild opposition to slavery led him to be dubbed a «cotton Whig». Democratic Party nomination Former President Martin Van Buren once again sought the Democratic nomination, but Lewis Cass was nominated on the fourth ballot. Cass had served as governor and senator for Michigan, as well as Secretary of War under Andrew Jackson, and from 1836 to 1842 as ambassador to France. General William O. Butler was nominated to join Cass on the ticket, garnering 169 delegate votes to defeat five other candidates, including future Vice President William R. King and future Confederate President Jefferson Davis. The Democrats chose a platform that remained silent on slavery, and with Cass suspected of pro-slavery leanings, many anti-slavery Democrats walked out of the Baltimore Convention to begin the Free Soil Party. Van Buren had burned for the nomination, but he had wanted it on a free soil platform. Neither his name nor his stand received any support at the Democratic Convention. <laughs> free Soil Party nomination The Free Soil Party, was organized for the 1848 election to oppose further expansion of slavery into the Western territories. Much of its support came from disaffected anti-slavery Barnburner Democrats and Conscience Whigs, including former President Martin Van Buren. The party was led by Salmon P. Chase and John Parker Hale and held its 1848 convention in Utica and Buffalo, New York. 
On June 22, Van Buren defeated Hale by a 154-129 delegate count to capture the Free Soil nomination, while Charles Francis Adams, whose father John Quincy Adams and grandfather John Adams had both served as president, was chosen as the vice presidential nominee. Van Buren knew that the Free Soilers had not the slightest chance of winning, rather that his candidacy would split the Democratic vote and throw the election to the Whigs. Bitter and aging, Van Buren did not care despite the fact his life had been built upon the rock of party solidarity and party regularity. He loathed Louis Cass and the principle of popular sovereignty with equal intensity. <laughs> <laughs> Liberty Party nomination Despite their significant showing in the prior presidential election, certain events would conspire to remove the Liberty Party from political significance. Initially, the nomination was to be decided in the fall of 1847 at a convention in Buffalo, New York. There, Senator John P. Hale was nominated over Jarrett Smith, brother-in-law to the party's previous nominee James G. Burney. Lester King, a former judge and state senator in Ohio, was nominated to be Hale's running mate. Anti-slavery Democrats and Whigs, disappointed with their respective nominees, would form a new movement in conjunction with members of the Liberty Party such as John Hale and Salmon Chase to form the Free Soil Party that summer. At this point, both Hale and King withdrew in favor of a Free Soil ticket led by former President Martin Van Buren, and the great majority of members of the Liberty Party followed them into the new political party. A small faction refused to support Van Buren for the presidency, however. They held another convention in June 1848 as the National Liberty Party. Jarrett Smith was nominated almost unanimously with Charles Foote, a religious minister from Michigan, as his running mate. Topic: <laughs> Other nominations. The Native American Party, a precursor to the Know Nothings, which had split from the Whig Party in 1845, met in September 1847 in Philadelphia, where they nominated Zachary Taylor for president and Henry A. S. Dearborn of Massachusetts for vice president. However, when the Whig Party nominated Taylor for the presidency with Millard Fillmore as his running mate the following year, this rendered his previous nomination moot and the Native American Party failed to make an alternate nomination. General election Campaign The campaign was fought without much enthusiasm, and practically without an issue. Neither of the two great parties made an effort to rally the people to the defense of any important principle. Whig campaigners, who included Abraham Lincoln and Rutherford B. Hayes, talked up Taylor's anti-party opposition to the Jacksonian commitment to the spoils system and yellow dog partisanship. In the South, they stressed that he was a Louisiana slaveholder, while in the North they highlighted his Whiggish willingness to defer to Congress on major issues, which he subsequently did not do. Democrats repeated, as they had for many years, their opposition to a national bank, high tariffs, and federal subsidies for local improvements. The Free Soilers branded both major parties lackeys of the slave arm, arguing that the rich planters controlled the agenda of both parties, leaving the ordinary white man out of the picture. They had to work around Van Buren's well-known reputation for compromising with slavery. The Whigs had the advantage of highlighting Taylor's military glories. With Taylor remaining vague on the issues, the campaign was dominated by personalities and personal attacks, with the Democrats calling Taylor vulgar, uneducated, cruel and greedy, and the Whigs attacking Cass for graft and dishonesty. The division of the Democrats over slavery allowed Taylor to dominate the Northeast. The Free Soilers were on the ballots in only 17 of the 29 states with the popular vote, making it mathematically possible for Van Buren to win the presidency, but he had no real chance. Still, the party campaigned vigorously, particularly in the traditional Democrat strongholds in the Northeast. While some Free Soilers were hopeful of taking enough states to throw the election into the House of Representatives, Van Buren himself knew this was a long shot and that the best that his party could do was lay the groundwork for a hopefully improved showing in 1852. 1848 Campaign Artwork Results 
With Taylor as their candidate, the Whigs won their second and last victory in a presidential election. Taylor won the Electoral College by capturing 163 of the 290 electoral votes. However, the popular vote was close. Although Taylor outpolled Cass in the popular vote by 138,000 votes, he came 79,000 votes shy of a majority. Thus, with 47% of the popular vote, Taylor was elected as a minority president. A study of the county returns reveals that free soil strength drawn at the expense of the major parties differed by region. In the east-north-central states, it appears at least the majority of the free soil strength was drawn from the Whig Party. Conversely, in the Middle Atlantic region, free soil bases of strength lay in the areas which had hitherto been Democratic, particularly in New York and northern Pennsylvania. The Free Soil Democrats' nomination of Van Buren made the victory of Taylor nearly certain in New York. On election day, enough Democratic votes were drawn away by Van Buren to give the Whig ticket all but two Democratic counties, thus enabling it to carry hitherto impregnable parts of Upper New York State. The Democrats, confronted with an irreparable schism in New York, lost the election. In New England, the Democratic vote declined by 33,000 from its 1844 level, while the Whig vote likewise declined by 15,000 votes. The third party vote tripled, and the total vote remained nearly stationary a partial indication, perhaps, of the derivation of the free soil strength in this section. For the first time since the existence of the Whig Party, the Whigs failed to gain an absolute majority of the vote in Massachusetts and Vermont. In addition, the Democrats failed to retain their usual majority in Maine, thus only New Hampshire Democratic and Rhode Island Whig of the states in this section gave their respective victorious parties clear-cut majorities. Of the 1,464 counties, independent cities making returns, Cass placed first in 753 51.43%, Taylor in 676 46.17%, and Van Buren in 31 2.12%. Four counties in the West split evenly between Taylor and Cass. This was the first time in the second party system in which the victorious party failed to gain at least a plurality of the counties as well as of the popular vote. As one historian remarks, somewhat sarcastically, practically the only thing it decided was that a Whig general should be made president because he had done effective work in carrying on a democratic war. This was the last election in which Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island voted for the Whigs. It was also the last time that Georgia voted against the Democrats until 1964, the last time Delaware and Louisiana did so until 1872, the last time Florida and North Carolina did so until 1868, and the last time New Jersey and Pennsylvania did so until 1860. Source Popular Vote, Lape, David. 1848 Presidential Election Results. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved July 27, 2005. Source Electoral Vote. Electoral College Box Scores 1789-1996. National Archives and Records Administration. Retrieved July 31, 2005, a, the popular vote figures exclude South Carolina where the electors were chosen by the state legislature rather than by popular vote. Geography of results Cartographic gallery Topic. Results by state This was the first election where the two leading candidates each carried half of the states. As of 2018, it has subsequently happened just once, in 1880. Source, data from Walter Dean Burnham, Presidential Ballots, 1836-1892 Johns Hopkins University Press, 1955 pp 247-57. Topic. Electoral College selection Asterisk Massachusetts law provided that the state legislature would choose the electors if no slate of electors could command a majority of voters statewide. In 1848, this provision was triggered. Topic. 
Topic See also American election campaigns in the 19th century History of the United States 1789 to 1849 Inauguration of Zachary Taylor Second party system United States House of Representatives elections 1848 United States Senate elections 1848